Hi, it's Alaska Granny. I've been working on my emergency stockpile and wondering what to buy now. I thought I would share with you some of the items that I chose to buy and give you an explanation of why I want to buy these things and why you might want to consider buying them also. Food is a key supply to have in your stockpile and you need to be taking an inventory and making sure that you have the things that you need. Always be asking yourself, what more could I do? What else would I need? What would I not ever want to be without? And that's how you make a plan for what your stockpile should include. There is no one right plan, one right food, or one right suggestion or idea for how to grow your food stockpile. You have to decide what foods do you like, what foods do you know how to prepare, and are you willing to eat. And those are the foods that you want to make sure you have plenty of for yourself and your family. Due to the coronavirus and the COVID-19, I've not been going to the grocery store, but I've been placing online orders and going and picking up at Walmart. It hasn't been without problems though because things are just not available. They're not even on the shopping list. Or when you're, you're searching through the items that you can choose, so many of them are out of stock. And it seemed like it was getting better for a while, but now I notice that it's dramatically worse. A lot of the items I may have chosen in the past don't even come up on the search engine and then a lot of the items are just out of stock. Plus the prices are going up. Even when I was able to add things to my cart, when I got ready and I hit the checkout, all of a sudden a bunch of them came up no longer available, which is extremely frustrating. And then when I went to pick up at the store, more of them were no longer available and had been left out of my order. So I probably had 30% of the items that I wanted that I didn't receive. So that tells me there are still food shortages, there's still some supply chain problems, and it's not something that I want to ignore. It's something I want to address. We're in the best time of the year. There's no weather problems. People supposedly are going back to work. We're feeling better. We're opening up more things. And yet uh, the supply chain is still having some glitches. I asked the clerk who brought the things out to my car, is there a better day to come? And she said, no, they just don't know. Yesterday they had two trucks come in and they were expecting four more that never showed up. So they don't know when the trucks are coming, they don't know when the supplies are there, they don't know themselves what's going to be available until it appears on the shelf. These are the foods and other supplies that I chose so that I have more of the things that I know I'm going to need going forward. Months from now, I don't know what the status will be of this COVID-19. We don't know if things will be shut down again, if the pandemic will come back up, if stores will close or just run out. And so it's important that you ask yourself, what do I have, what will I need, and how can I get it? And that's what I did. I started with some variety of grits, which I usually have oatmeal, but I decided grits would be a nice change and you can store it so that it lasts quite a few years. Three easy ways to serve grits are make your grits, add some jam, make creamy grits with media crema. It's canned cream, it's table cream, and so it can really make the best tasting grits if you cook them in the cream. Make cheesy grits by adding a handful of shredded cheddar. Canned soups are great to have on hand. I've noticed that there isn't as much beef in the store, so I stockpiled specifically beef flavored soups to make sure that I have some meat in my stockpile. Soups are nice no matter the emergency. You can pull off the lid and eat them out of the can if you had to. Of course, they're better heated up, but they're already completely cooked and they'll last for a long time in your food pantry. How to make a quick meal with a can of soup. Get the Idahoan potatoes, the mashed potatoes. You only need water. They're delicious and you only need water so they're super convenient. Make up your mashed potatoes and pour over it a heated up can of beef pot roast soup or steak and potatoes. What's a yummy way to serve the baked potato with cheddar and bacon bit soup? Steam some broccoli and pour the hot steaming soup over your broccoli florets and it's like the reverse of when you bake a potato and you put all the toppings on it, you are making an upside down specialty baked potato. Meat has been in very short supply in the stores and if you look at the news, animals are being slaughtered but not sent to market. The
carcasses are being wasted because of problems in the economy or the shipping or they can't find workers I don't know there's lots of different reasons so I stocked up on the, what I could get of canned meat I could only get two cans of roast beef I could get no ham and I like the chicken so I got lots of chicken I got two sizes because sometimes you can use a small can to make a small meal or a large can to make a large meal and the canned meats last many years past their expiration their best by sell by date because it's not really an expiration date it's a use by date so don't be afraid to have a nice supply of meat in your food storage that has been one of the food items that has been the hardest to get during the last several months how to use canned roast beef heat it up with a can of portobello mushrooms add some onions and some media crema as your sour cream serve it over egg noodles and you have a delicious stroganoff from your pantry I'll put a link to a video I made on how to turn media crema into sour cream if you're interested in that recipe an easy way to use a can of chicken add it with some great northern beans a half a jar of green salsa warm it through top it with cheese and you have a wonderful chicken chili I got some chicken bouillon cubes and some lentils for my longer term food storage lentils are high in protein fiber iron they're full of nutrients and they're simple to prepare stored properly they can last for 30 years lentils are comparable to storing beans but there's no need to soak them add three cups of water with one cup of lentils and you can cook them in 30 minutes you can make a quick lentil curry cook a half a cup of lentils with a can of chicken broth and add one tablespoon of curry powder lentils are nice for your long-term food storage because they can last for up to 30 years if they're stored properly and they're dense a pound of lentils takes up only about half as much space in your pantry as a pound of beans so if food storage space is an issue you may want to add some lentils to your food storage pantry both the lentils and the grits are great for long-term food storage but you can't just leave them in the package they're in I like to store them in clean canning jars and then there's three different ways you can seal them number one you can just screw on the lid that helps them last for several years what's better is if you have something like a food saver with the jar attachment you put the jar attachment over your jar and it sucks out all the air and they'll last for many years that way or you can order oxygen absorbers online and place one of those into each jar and screw down the lid quickly and that will remove the oxygen stored properly things like lentils and grits and other dried foods can last for up to 30 years my five pounds of lentils filled six pint sized jars with the wide mouth and when you're storing dried food like this and you want to keep air out fill it to the tippy top you don't want to leave air space at the top like you would if you're canning wet canning because you don't need to allow air space for expansion and you want to tap 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 to get down as far as you can compact it fill it to the rim because grits are made of corn and I've had problems with weevils and bugs in corn meal corn products I'm gonna put this in the freezer for a few days and one of the recommendations with things like grain is put them in the freezer for a few days allow them to thaw out and then any unhatched insects may hatch then then you freeze them again for a few more days and take them out so one of the best ways to make sure you get rid of all of the little critters is to freeze it thaw it freeze it again thaw it and then pack up your food in your jars or your mylar bags if that's what you choose this is a time of year when people are harvesting their gardens catching their fish and canning a lot of produce and meats what's difficult this year is I've had a hard time finding new canning jars so uh, the only size I could get this year was this pint wide mouth and I usually like the quart with the wide mouth and they've been impossible to buy more of this year so if you see them pick them up also lids have been extremely hard to find I was able to get one pack of the wide mouth lids and one pack of the regular mouth lids and those can store in your pantry forever they're always available to use if you have them and you need to store food 
I was able to get some bleach tablets, which was a real find, and they are the original scent. If you want a way to store bleach for not only purifying water, but disinfecting, especially during this time of COVID when we're supposed to disinfect everything, look for the bleach tablets. See how they're little tablets. You can drop one into the washing machine. You can drop one into your toilet bowl. I like to place one in an empty spray bottle and fill it with hot water and then I have a bleach disinfectant spray. You can also drop one or two into a bucket if you're going to mop or something like that. They're not actually designed to purify water. It tells you not to, but I figure if I run out of clean drinking water and every other way I know how to purify water, this is something I'm going to be glad to have on hand. And for that reason, I never buy any kind of bleach that's scented because I don't want to end up with lavender smelling water or clean burst of whatever. That's not a scent I would ever want to find in my drinking water. Those are the foods that I'm adding to my food storage stockpile and how I plan to use some of them. Look over your own food stockpile. Make sure you're storing enough food for a week, two weeks, a month, several months. As much food as you can afford to store and as much room as you have to rotate it successfully so that nothing goes to waste. Then no matter what happens, you'll be able to open your pantry and make a meal for yourself and your family no matter what the circumstances are. Stock up while things are still available. It just makes sense to be a prepper. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.